Did you see the new order from the headquarters? They said they want to have our office location added to all our file names and they want it done by the end of today. Ooh, that's a lot of files. But wait, I know how to do that. Let me get started. Get cracking. One hour later. Wait, you're doing it manually? How else would I do that? So many ways, but not manual. You already have a great tool for that on your computer. Get out of the way, let me show you. Okay, so pay attention. The tool you're gonna use is called Power Automate for desktop. Great news is that if you have Windows 11, it's already pre-installed for you. If you don't have Windows 11, but you have Office 365, you just go to your office.com account, go to Power Automate and install it from there. With Power Automate for desktop, you get to build simple to complex robots. This isn't a tool just for programmers, it's a tool for noobs and pros. So yeah, you can use it too. Once you have it installed, just open it up. And if you have any existing automations created, you're gonna see it here. You can give your automations cool names like this one, which reminds me, there is a button below this video that you can click to make sure you don't miss out on any cool office tips. Obviously, learning is a journey and every journey begins with the first step. So subscribe and stay in touch. Now, if you've never created automations before, you're probably going to see a button here that you can click to create a new flow. In my case, the new flow is up here, so I'm going to click that. Now I can give my flow a name. I'm going to call it Rename System Files. Power Automate is going to start to get things ready for me. And we come to this view. On the left here, I have so many different actions I can choose from. Under file, for example, I get the ability to rename files. But because my files could be in multiple folders, I could go ahead and get the files in the folder first and then rename these. Before we start with our automation, let's take a look at what we need to do. So you were trying to rename all of these files manually and you wanna add Chicago underscore in front of each one. So let's go ahead and first grab the files in the folder. I'm going to click on this, drag and drop it here, and I'm going to get a new pop-up where I can specify the folder. So let's select it. We have a mapped SharePoint folder, and we also have a mapped OneDrive folder. So your files are here in Noob, Work Stuff, and System Daily Data, and click on OK. Then we can also apply filters to include only specific files. Now, since in this case, we want to rename all the files in the folder, there's no need to add anything for filter. Will it also work on files in subfolders? Duh, if you turn it on, of course it will. And actually, I've realized that you do have a subfolder here called old data, and we have to rename all of these files as well. So yeah, we are going to turn on include subfolders. Notice a variable here was produced called files. And this was done automatically for you. This is just the output of this step and it's gonna become relevant in our next step. So we are gonna save and close this and move on to the next step. The next one is to rename the file. So I'm gonna click on this, drag and drop it here. What file do I wanna rename? Well, it's not a specific file, it's the output of my previous step. So notice that last icon here, it says select variable. I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna see files so let's click it and select it. What type of renaming scheme do we want to apply? Do we want to add text, remove text, replace text, change the extension, add date time, or add sequential numbers? Well, in this case, we want to add text. What do we want to add? We want to add Chicago underscore. Do we want it after the name or before the name? In this case, before name. If the file with that name exists, what do we want to happen? Do we want to overwrite the file or do nothing? Well, I'm going to be on the safe side and do nothing. Now notice a variable or an output of this step was also produced. And if you are going to have more steps, you can reuse this. In this case, that's our last step. We don't really need this. I'm just going to deactivate this and click on save. And that's it. All we had to do was drag and drop, make a bunch of selections, and we get to rename everything by clicking this one button here. Now, let me just bring up my Explorer so we can see things happening in real time. I'm just going to snap it here. And now let's run this. We can see all the names updated super fast. 
And if I go to all data, all of these has been updated as well. Imagine having to do this manually. No, no, don't imagine that. Now, if this is an automation that you're planning to reuse, you can save it. You know, HR asked me to rename the contracts. We have to include the employee name instead of the ID. Do you think you can use your magic tool for this as well? But each change is different, so probably not. Of course you can. You can make dynamic replacements too. We just need a template and we can use the HR master file for that. Let's go over to your desk. Let's go over the task quickly so I make sure I understand properly. Here we have the different contracts. They end with the employee ID. We need to replace that ID with the employee's name or their initials. To get their initials, we have an Excel file down here, which gives us the employee ID, their name, their first initial and the last name, the current file name of their contract, their manager, and so on. The information that we need is this one here. So we need to get this ID and replace it with this name here. If we were going to do this manually, we're going to open this file. We're going to take a look at the Explorer. We're going to go to 126, scroll down to find 126, and then grab this, copy it, go here, and paste it in, right? So that's what we're going to do. And then we have to repeat that for all of these files. No, 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 we're not going to do that. We are going to use Power Automate. So I'm just going to press Control Z here. Let's set this up really quickly. Open up Power Automate and create a new flow. Give this a name. Click on Create. Now, how do we start? What do we need to drag and drop? Well, the way you give instructions to your robot is the same way you would explain the steps to a newbie. First thing they need to do is to open up your Excel master file so that they can see what is the old ID and what's the name. So we're going to go to the Excel section here and launch Excel. We don't want a blank document. We want to open an existing document. That document is sitting right here. It's in the contracts folder all the way down. That's what we need. Click on open and save. Next step is to go through this file row by row. We have data starting from row two all the way to row 60. And we need to go through this row by row. That's exactly what our robot needs to do as well. And check this out. There is a loop section here. We need to loop through the rows. So let's drag and drop loop in our flow. We want to start from the second row. We're going to stop on row 60 and we want to go one row at a time. The variable that's created is loop index. This is going to always tell us where inside the loop we're at. And that's the way you can reference to each single row. We're going to click on save and we get this visual loop added here. Whatever we want to happen for each single row is going to be added inside this loop. Well, what would a person need to do to be able to make these changes? They need three different information. They need to know what is the old ID. They need to know what they should replace it with, which is this one. And they need to know the file name. All of this information we have here in the different columns. We need to read this information. That's what our robot needs to do. Under Excel here, we can read from the Excel file. So we're going to drag and drop this inside the loop. Which Excel file? Well, the same Excel file that we opened right here, which is reflected with this variable. We want to read the value of a single cell. The start column is A. You can use letters or numbers here. And the start row, that's not a specific row, but that's the row inside our loop. So we're going to go and read each single row. We're going to use loop index variable here. Now, if I don't change these variables that are produced, I'm just going to get dummy variables called Excel data, Excel data one, two, and so on. And I'm not going to know what exactly I'm reading from each file. So you can change these names yourself. You can just click and change. So column A has the old ID. Let's rename that and save. Now I'm doing this because it's going to make things easier later on. And you're going to see that in a bit. Next thing we need to read is the new name that we want to add. And that was, I believe, in column D because column B seems to be hidden there. Again, start row is the loop index and save. But no, not too fast. I should change the variable name so that it's easier to reference later on. Let's go ahead and edit this step and call this new name and save. 
Now we're going to read the existing file name. That was in column E, loop index, and let's change this to file name and click on save. Now that we have all the information we need, we can go ahead and rename our files. So that's inside the file section here. We have rename files. We're going to drag and drop it inside our loop. What file do we want to rename? Well, it's all our contracts. So let's go ahead and select the folder we have these contracts in, which is right here. Click on OK. And now we want to add on the name of the file for each single row, right? So we're inside the loop. We want to add this to that folder path. So we're going to add a backslash and now use our variable, which was file name. What is our rename scheme? We want to replace text. What text do we want to replace? Again, we're going to go with our variable. Because we gave them good names, it's easier to identify. We want to replace the old ID with the new name. If the file exists, we could overwrite it, but I'm just going to do nothing. And in case we run into an error, we can either throw the error or continue the flow run. Now, it could be that I have file names in the master file that don't exist in my file explorer. So I just want to continue the flow run and click on save. OK, so now that I have everything set up, I'm launching Excel. Let's also close Excel in the end. So let's just scroll down to Excel and close it. The same Excel instance, and we don't want to save the document. If everything is set up correctly, it should work. Let's test it out. Click on play. We can see it's running. Now we should be able to see it loop here. We can see it's going through each single row. We can see the result of the variables here. And if you take a look at our Explorer, we should see these change in real time. And we can see the numbers are being replaced by the names. Imagine if we had to do this manually. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and wish me luck. Bye bye.